Hey, Bastish Pia for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Quick Bites. And welcome back. Today's episode is going to be about the Zap 64 Annual 2019. This was released by Fusion Retro Books. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with the Zap 64 Annual, then it was a really successful Kickstarter. It did really well. I was one of the backers. I'm super happy with how this thing turned out. It's excellent. It's about 130 pages or so of C64 goodness. If you're unfamiliar with the Zap 64 name, then it was a really, really popular UK gaming magazine for the Commodore 64 in the 80s and early 90s. This is one of my old issues from about 1992 or so. Look, it had, it had double tapes, double tape demos. How cool is that? <laughs> Forgot about that. Anyway, so this annual is done in the exact same style as the original Zap64 magazine, right down from how the reviews play out and how they look, from all the articles, everything. It's like a total flashback into that kind of look and feel. And he has a quick look at the front cover with artwork by Oliver Frey. If you don't know who he is, he used to do the front covers for all the classic run of the Zap 64 magazine. I love the fact that they got him back to do this excellent front cover for this annual. Okay, so we're going to do a quick run through of this book. I'm not going to spoil every little detail about it, but we are going to run through all the major sections in it so you can get a good overall sense of what it's like. So it's pretty safe to assume that everybody that backed this project was a fan of the original Zap64 magazine. And what that magazine did best was game reviews. So what they've actually done here is that they're not reviewing old games, they're reviewing new games that have come out on the Commodore 64 in the last 10 years or so and they've compiled them all to make a whole annual just full of like new games which I think is an awesome idea. There's so many good games that have come out in the last 10 years or so on the C64, even a little bit longer than that. So let's take a look at one of the reviews and you can see exactly the way they set it out which is very reminiscent of the old style. This is Galencia, one of my favorite games of the last couple of years. Okay, so up top here you have the name, who published it and what year it came out got a sizzler which means it's excellent he has the main description of the game with the story and all the other little elements then we got the three reviewers and they all give their own unique opinions on the game here is the final score it's rated under presentation graphics sound hookability last ability and your overall which got 91 which is excellent so you're probably wondering who did they get to review these games. So what's cool is that they went back and they got a bunch of the guys from the original magazine to come back. They got Julian Regnall there. He was a reviewer and then he later became the editor of the magazine and he does a bunch of stuff in here. You got Robin Hogg, he was also a reviewer from back in the day. He's doing reviews in here as well. You've also got a whole bunch of other Commodore 64 aficionados, guys that are big fans or have worked in the industry or worked around a C64, kind of promoting it and stuff like that. They are all here. So it makes out a really well-rounded team. So I was really happy to see the return of the adventure section in the Zap Annual. This was always one of my favorite aspects of the magazine. It used to cover like point and click adventures, which there weren't a lot on the C64 to be honest. Regular adventure games, typing and text, graphic adventure games, RPGs. It covered all those weird genres that not everybody was into, but I used to just love those kinds of games. The adventure ones were just like my favorites. So one of the new articles I really like in this annual is called Zap Back. It's Julian Regno. He goes back and checks out all the games that got gold medals in the original run of uh, Zap 64. So if you don't know what the gold medal was, it was like the highest award that Zap could have given a game at the time. So they go back and check out all the ones that got golds and they see whether they actually held up to those lofty uh, kind of reviews. And it's a pretty interesting uh, take on everything. Another section I really like is this one called Zapped Into Oblivion. Basically what it is, it's going through a whole bunch of games that were either announced and never released, or games that were completed and never released. Hopefully somebody out there can find some of these files and release these games at some point, or 
it's just a really good look at all the games that were in development that just didn't see the light of day. It's such a shame because there were so many good ones in here. Well, we don't really know. Some of them, they could be really bad, but they just looked really cool. And I remember actually reading the previews for some of these games and they just never came out. It's a really good, uh, really good section to check out. At the end of the annual, it's got a really cool section called Zap Flash. It's a few pages worth of stuff. It's showing all the upcoming games that are coming out for the C64, ones that are coming out very soon, and ones that are like maybe quite a ways away, but are in development right now. A really nice look at all the upcoming stuff that you can look forward to on your C64, which you're obviously gonna be able to play on your C64 Mini as well. Other awesome sections include Simon Butler's Art Gallery, the SID Top 10 for great SID tunes on new games, Cover Tape Crackers where they check out the best demos that came out on the tape, Making of Sizzler, a game that was made in conjunction with the annual, and this really good interview with the guys that made the C64 Mini, and there's many other articles that I haven't mentioned that you should totally check out. So if you want to find any of these games, most of them are available at the Cytronic Software website. Here's a link below. They are excellent. They have tons and tons of games out there that you can pick up. A lot of them are reviewed in here. Also RGCD, they also have tons of games like Rocket Smash and stuff. Protovision, they also, they do Valencia. What I also really like is that they put links in the adventure section here of all the games that are there and they give links to the websites where you can actually find these games and download them which is super useful because a lot of these games I would never have found otherwise. I've known about some of them, I just never know where to get them. So it's got all the information in here which is pretty damn good. So what's my overall impression of this annual? I think it's absolutely brilliant. A big shout out to Chris Wilkins for putting this all together. You can check out the Zap64 annual Facebook page. I'm a member of that. Really nice bunch of people there. Lots of cool Commodore 64 info if you want to go check that out too. Excellent. This book is just brilliant. I'd highly recommend checking it out. I'd highly recommend buying it. Overall though, I think this is just a must-have book for any real Commodore 64 fan.